This video is made possible by our loyal Patreon supporters. Visit patreon.com slash psychytruth. I am so excited that you're taking this journey with me and I will be with you every step of the way. I have tons of awesome videos already ready for you on our Yoga Plus app, or you can head over to Amazon Prime. Hey guys, it's Julia. I'm excited to let you know that I just got done filming a 50 minute class to help you build a better backbend. And that is actually going to be a part of a new 30 day sort of deep in your yoga practice series that I'm putting together for you. And I promise it will be out soon. But in the meantime, I wanted to let you know a little bit about what we did in that class, specifically on how do we get a little more space ah, in our chest and in our shoulders. Because when we're back bending, we tend to just sort of like kind of dump down in our lumbar because that part of our back bends very easily. But if we're feeling a little bit restricted in our chest and in our shoulders, we can use some props to open some spaces. That way when we're doing a back bend, we can actually have this really nice curve that's pretty even across our spine rather than just accumulating in our low back, which isn't gonna feel very good if we're doing a ton of back bends. Okay, so you probably are familiar with some yoga blocks. I'm gonna show you first a way to work with yoga blocks to get a passive stretch for your chest. So when you do this, you're going to take your two blocks and you're going to put some space between them. Remember that your blocks have multiple height. Um, most of us are not gonna be here on the tallest height. Maybe that's you and if that's you, groovy. A lot of us are gonna work pretty well in the middle and some of us might need to go a little bit lower. So just remember that you can do you. All right, the space between here is essentially space for your neck. This first block is going to be somewhere near your shoulder blades behind your rib cage. So if you feel it on your the curvy part of your low back, you've gone too far down, you wanna feel it a little higher. This second block is gonna essentially be for the back of your head, sort of like um, a pillow. Not a pillow you're gonna go to sleep on though, so not super comfortable. Okay, so come on back. What I like to do is I sort of set myself up with my feet out in front of me so I feel pretty stable. That way I can slowly lower down and this first block is going to come basically right behind my rib cage. So again, it's not in the low back, it's behind my ribs, near my shoulder blades. The second block is going to go behind my head. Okay. So from here, you might need to situate your shoulder blades out of the way as I just did. And then for some folks who are pretty tight in the chest, your arms are probably gonna be right down at your sides. This is plenty. You're still getting a nice opening. Some folks are going to have a little more range. You might be able to take your arms out. If you're gonna be holding this for a long period of time, you do wanna find a place where your elbows and your hands can be down on the ground. Otherwise, you're just gonna be stressing out your shoulder and that's no good. I'm happy to have you open it and get a little stretch for it, but I don't want you to be causing your shoulder to become unstable or to cause any pain. So if you notice that it's sharp, shooting, pinching, burning, just you know, unbearably uncomfortable, you know, take your arms down a little bit lower or adjust the blocks. Great. So that's one position that you can do with these blocks. Sometimes we have this idea that props are um, a crutch or that um, it means that we're not an advanced yogi. That is not true at all. Props are amazing for the practice. So use them, love them, get to know them. Second way you might open up your chest is with a strap. When you work with a strap, it essentially comes behind you. Even if you can bind your hands, it's still awesome to be able to work with a strap sometimes. In my body, my right shoulder tends to be a little bit wonky, so I, I pay special attention to whether or not I'm asking it to do too much. You can see here that I can safely secure my shoulder blades onto my back body, and my chest can stay lifted. So for me, this is about as far as I'm gonna go in terms of lifting my knuckles away from my seat. But I'm also getting just this really nice stretch in the front of my shoulders without um, fear of going too far. So that's a great place to be with your strap. If you don't have a strap at home, you can use a belt or the tie from a robe or a longer washcloth. Great. So now 
What's this crazy thing behind me? <laughs> I wanna give you um, actually two ways that you can use this prop to help you get into your back bends as well. This is a yoga wheel. There's a few reasons I love the yoga wheel. One, it's super duper um, diverse. You can use it for a lot of different reasons, but if you just got one or you maybe have played around with one of these at a studio, perhaps you're like, all I can do is back bend on this thing. So I wanna give you two things that you can do. Um, another thing I like about this yoga wheel is just how like solid it is. So if you're having like prop insecurity, this little block, you're like, that, that's not doing anything for me. You need to bust out the big guns. <laughs> you got this guy. Okay, cool. So let's go into what you probably already are thinking about. I'm gonna use it to back bend over. Absolutely. So how are we gonna do that? Grab it, okay? I like to grab it a little bit lower. And already you can see that my spine can curve around it. From there, bring your feet out in front of you. Lift your seat just like you're doing a little wheel. If you lean your head back, you have a nice little headrest behind you and you get a little bonus because this is gonna be somewhat active for your legs, but a really nice big passive stretch. To unwind yourself, you just roll back down and you get a beautiful experience in a back bend. It also gets you pretty comfortable in that, getting your head down. So if you notice that part of your struggle and wheel is just letting your neck release, this gives you a sense of security because you know eventually the back of your head is gonna touch this really solid prop and you'll have, um, you'll have a lot of um, safety and security and you're gonna be able to trust your ability to let your head go. Okay, but I wanna show you a second way that this prop can help your back bend and it might be in a way that you've never done before. So we're gonna use it for a lunge which is essentially gonna open up our hip flexor and this can also be a really nice thing if you don't like putting your knee on the ground in your Anjaneyasana. So essentially set yourself up for a lunge and put the wheel in front of your back leg. As you do that, you can then deepen into your lunge enough that you can place your quad on the wheel and then roll forward slightly until you feel a hip flexor stretch. You don't have to do much to feel it, it's awesome. So I'm still strengthening this front leg. In fact, when I'm touching my hamstring, hamstrings totally turned on, my glutes are turned on a little bit, I can feel my quads starting to go. I'm still having to actively press down through that front heel. But because I have the support of the yoga wheel, I'm able to really access opening up my hip flexor. And if I roll forward just a little bit more, it gets a little more intense. If that's too intense, I can back out. If I want to roll my quad a little bit with it and sort of play oscillating back and forth, that's a place that I can be and I'm really supported. So again, my knee's not touching the ground, I'm able to stay a little more upright and I can also access this really nice release for the front of my hip. So maybe you've never done that with your yoga wheel before or maybe you're like, what else is the yoga wheel good for? There are two really awesome really awesome uses for this big guy. But remember, you can get a lot done with these beautiful blocks. If you are buying blocks and you're like, how do I feel a little more confident about my blocks? Make sure you're getting like a cork block or a really firm foam block. Because for me, I tend to have a little more faith in those because they're super solid and I know that they're gonna hold me. And if you are in the market for a strap, if you're taller like me, make sure you get like an eight or a 10 foot strap. So that's gonna give you a little more space to work with. I find that the four and six foot straps tend to be a little bit too short for me, especially if I wanna fold them in half when I'm using them. Okay. I hope that you have a little more confidence to go play around with your props. The best way to get started with props is to just use them and to be open to experimenting. So as you start to have a little bit more fun with some of your yoga props, remember that you might be just inventing your own way to use them. That doesn't mean it's wrong. And if you can incorporate them into your practice, and it gives you either more challenge or more ease, then that's an amazing way to deepen your own personal yoga practice. All right, I'll see you in my next yoga video. Until then, check in with us and let us know how you're doing. Namaste.
many of our subscribers don't see our videos, make sure that you click the notification bell. And if you haven't already, follow us on social media for tips, tutorials, giveaways, and daily inspiration. I have tons of awesome videos already ready for you on our Yoga Plus app, or you can head over to Amazon Prime. Introducing Yoga Plus, offering a free series every month with over 300 different videos. Take control of your health. Work out anytime, anywhere. Yoga Plus, download now for free.